Good morning and welcome to Saturday Psalm Things with Mats. I'm Mats and today we have a very, very special guest. This is Dave. He is with Champagne Colet and I'm really excited today because we get to try four amazing champagnes from the house of Colet and it's just brilliant and tasty. So Dave, Take it away. Let's go. Sure. Well, you know, Colet's a, a fantastic little winery in Champagne. We are celebrating our 100th anniversary this year, founded in 1921. And they had a lot to do with the AOC laws being developed in France. So a tiny bit of history. Back in the early 1900s, uh, Phylloxera was raging through Europe and Champagne especially, and people were having trouble getting grapes to produce their cuvées. So a couple growers went outside the region and brought some fruit back in from the Languedoc and from Algeria, which was an apartment of France at the time. Inferior fruit, bought it, brought it back to Champagne, produced sparkling wine, and labeled it as being from the region. And it made the growers crazy. So it started the riots of 1911. They actually had to call in the French National Guard to control everybody. And Raoul Collet said, listen, we need, we need to approach our government and and talk to them about having some kind of regulations that gives us a geographic boundary and tells us what we can plant and how we can make our wine and things like that. So in 1919, Champagne became the first geographic AOC. And then 1936, the AOC laws came out for the rest of the country because the other regions had heard of what Champagne was doing and thought it was a great idea. So there goes Champagne Collet. And Collet is a, their house style is to be very fresh and fruit forward. The wines are aged much longer than the requirements by law. Uh, today we're going to start with the Brit Art Deco. If we were tasting just one wine, this is the wine I would show you, Mots, because it's our flagship wine. So it's a blend of 40% Chardonnay, 40% Pinot Noir, and 20% Pinot Meunier. It's aged for four years before it's released. So we like to think that we age the wines for you, and when they come to you in the market, they're ready to drink. So I love the nose already. Yeah, it's A little got, bit of brioche and lemon zest. It's very, it almost reminds me of quince. Mm -hmm. And that's a word that they throw out in the house of Cole a lot because it's very appropriate. And with the Art Deco, notice the design, you know, the Roaring Twenties. This house was established in 1921, much like my shirt, but <laughs> that's another story. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, 1921, you're right, the mm. Roaring Twenties were, were going strong, and Art Deco was a, a theme, and we've maintained that theme throughout our hundred years of production. I love the taste. I it's do, too. This is, uh, you know, oh, we're yeah. really well known for our biscuity character sure, on the nose, sure. which is evident on this, but mm -hmm. it's, this is so bright and has such brownness. It's, you right. know, the Chardonnay adds elegance, the Pinot Noir adds body, mm -hmm. and the Pinot Meunier adds that richness and fresh fruit. So yeah, it's one just, of my favorites. Just a beautiful little wine. Absolutely. And then we have the... Mm, I know, of, I like it. One of my favorites as well. This is our Blanc de Blanc. So... Uh, Blanc de Blanc is a delicacy. It's, this is 100% Chardonnay made from Grand Cru and Premier Cru vineyards. So you can see on both the Art Deco and the Blanc de Blanc how it says Premier Cru. That means that for the blend of these wines, we can use nothing below a Premier Cru vineyard. Grand Cru being top, Premier Cru being level two, and then everything else falls below that. So A beautiful golden color, just crisp, teeny tiny bubbles. Yeah, this is probably our most delicate champagne and in some ways our most complex mm -hmm. as well because it is one single varietal, 100% Chardonnay, uh, and it, but it's got, it brings on characters of the soil. You start to get that chalkiness. You know, our soils are made of Kimmeridgean Lime. clay. And, and limestone. Yeah, and when you go to visit the, the wineries and you go into their caves, the, the caves that are actually where they store the bottles of wine are ancient Roman mines where they used to go down and mine this soil, this chalk, to build buildings and roads and things like that. And you could have this with seafood or eggplant or berries and cream. Sure, light fishes, anything like that. This is the, the perfect accompaniment to caviar. Oh know. yeah, it's very versatile. Yeah, it's such a beautiful wine. It really is. For 100% Chardonnay, I love the color. I love the the aroma, the biscuits. And yeah. The, and this has been aged... Brittany buns. Oh, yes, exactly. This has been aged five years, so now you're really starting to see the complexity of a wine that's been on the leaves for this long, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful bottle of wine. And now? Now we're going to go to our most fruit-forward wine, which is the Colet Rosé. 
And this is a blend of 50% Pinot Noir, 40% Chardonnay, and 10% Pinot Meunier. So, you know, Champagne is one of the few wines that's actually fermented twice. So we start out, we make the blend of all the red and white grapes. We make a still wine base. Then what they do for rosé is we produce about 15% of the wine as a, as a red still wine. We blend those together. <clears throat> we put the wine in this exact bottle, add a little bit of yeast and sugar, and put a beer cap on it. And then we put it on its side, basically. Over a period of a few years, we'll rotate that bottle and make it go upside down to get all that yeast back in there. Well, while that sugar and yeast are in the bottle, it's producing a little more alcohol and, and the tiny little bubbles that we see in champagne. It's beautiful. It's elegant. It has finesse. You could easily pair this with, to be cliche, salmon or any other heavy, sturdy fish, swordfish, ahi, something that's big and meaty and just tasty, not only complimenting the champagne, but obviously your guests and what you're serving that day. Sure, and, and duck, pizza, things like that are perfect compliments to this as well. If you're looking for a wine to have with a salad, let's say a spinach salad with strawberries and goat cheese, this rosé would be beautiful. Oh yeah, I mean, it's not terribly fruit forward. You get pomegranate, you get a little boysenberry, a little bing cherry, but yeah. it's just delicate. It is, and it's, but, and it's got this nice, this elegant acidity mm -hmm. on the finish. Yeah, you I know, love it. Champagnes are, are harvested, the fruit is harvested early, so they're naturally high in acidity, which allows the wines to be able to age for a while before we release them. So this has been aged four years before release as well. And our viewers are probably wondering why the last bottle is unopened. Well, Dave is going to take care of that and give you a little lesson on how to open a bottle of champagne without it exploding everywhere. Right. Okay. So, so it can be a little bit intimidating. You know, there's actually about four times as much pressure in this bottle as in the tires on your car. So you do have to be a little bit careful. Uh, we try to make it a little easier for you. This is a little tab that you just pull on. You remove part of the foil. And because there's so much pressure in here, the, the glass for these bottles is thicker than most. Uh, and we have a special closure, right? A champagne style cork. The cork is held in by this metal cage. So the metal cage has a little twist tab here. So what you need to do is remember to always keep your finger or hand over the top of the, the uh, cork. Twist this cage off. And when it's completely twisted off, then you hold onto the cork and you twist the bottle, holding the bottle at about a 45% angle. Now, race car drivers love to make that huge pop and send the cork flying, right? But we don't want to do that. We want to try to let the cork out very, very slowly until Beautiful. the gas escapes. And that'll keep more activity in the glass for us. Oh, and look at that. And what he's pouring now is the Collet Vintage 2008. This is actually a really special bottle. This is uh, oh, wow. what we call our uh, collection privé, which is essentially private collection. So this is also, as most champagnes are, this is a blended wine. This is 75% Chardonnay, 20% Pinot Noir, and 10% Pinot Meunier. Mm. The biggest difference with this wine is that we talked about how we harvest our fruit early. We have high acidity, so we and most champagne houses have all the still wine go through malolactic fermentation. It changes the the citric-like acid to a creamy acid, makes the wine softer. With this wine, the 75% of Chardonnay, we actually do not put it through malolactic fermentation, okay. but we do store it in oak barrels. Then we blend the wine together, put it in the bottle, and we age this for eight years before release. It's beautiful. It is. Now, for most houses, the, the Brut vintage wines are going to be their biggest, sturdiest wines, and, and we're no exception to that. This is a big mouthful of champagne. It really is. You do have some influence from the oak on it, by all means. It's t terribly complex in the, yeah. in the, on the nose. I mean, I, it's, I it, just think it's dynamic. It really is. It's, this is that biscuity style wine again. You know, we are a reductive style of champagne, not an oxidative style. So we're trying to keep that freshness. It's, it's beautiful. You could pair this with anything and everything. In Anybody. Yeah. In Holidays, celebrations, great dinners, you name it. This is amazing. And it's so affordable. And for everybody at home, all of these are going to be on sale, of course. Ms. Sheila is going to put them on sale, located in Champagne Isle and also by Register 5. 
This is also in the fine wine room, and that's on sale, and the holidays are coming up, so you know what to do and when to buy. And Dave, I can't thank you enough for doing everything to tell people about Champagne Colet. Well, you know what I always say, you, you are not ready for a celebration unless you have a couple bottles of champagne in your refrigerator. So now's a great time to come down to Argonaut and pick up a few. This is true. And cheers. Cheers. My favorite champagne toast is, may all of your pains be champagne. I love it. So come on down, keep liking, keep loving, keep watching, keep commenting. We're here. Argonaut is amazing. We've got these fantastic champagnes, so please, by all means, treat yourself. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you.